I am Batman. I mean, Average Sniper. Hey, what's up everybody? Average Sniper here. Welcome to another PUBG video. So, this was kind of a special gameplay to me for two reasons. Uh, and it made me want to share it with you guys. And those two reasons are, first, uh, this is the end of classic Sanak as we know it. And there will be Sanak Remastered, uh, I believe, coming out next week. It's been on the test servers, and usually the test server goes for about a week, and then the real version comes out along with the new season. So that's going to be pretty cool, and it might get me playing a little more PUBG. And I have been uploading regular PUBG content to the channel alongside my Warzone content. So that's the first reason this is special, because it's uh, probably my last match on the old Sanak. And then the second reason is because of what happened in this game and the circumstances under which I played it. So I have a friend that comes over and hangs out at my house every now and then, and he is obsessed with lag. He plays online games just like me. Oh, here's a guy. All right, I think that was a bot, and I think that's my only bot kill of the game. So anyway, my friend is completely completely obsessed with fixing lag at his house so he always comes over to my house and we talk about ways to fix it settings in your router nerdy stuff like that and anyway he was doing some tests and he wanted me to play a multiplayer game so that he could do some tests while someone was playing a game look at this guy on the roof didn't even see me line up for the nice little uh headshot body tap right there got two kills so anyway, I hadn't played PUBG all day. I just signed on and played this game because he asked me to so that he could run some tests on his computer. And my only PUBG game of the day turned out to be an amazing game. So I wanted to make it into a video, share it with you guys, and I'm going to walk you through my thought process in this game step by step. So basically right here we have two kills and I can hear a guy's footsteps. He knows I'm here. He's down on the ground. I can hear him right on the other side of this building. So my plan was to get some high ground, be sneaky about it, and wreck him with the vector. Now I'm running really low ammo for my vector, so I want to grab some more ammo as soon as possible. Alright, but somebody tags me while I'm looting. Gets a nice body shot on me with what sounds like maybe a bolt action sniper rifle, maybe a car 98. And uh, yeah, it is not worth looting this guy anymore. So my guns right now are the QBU with, uh, I believe, a two-time scope, the Vector with a red dot sight, and all level two gear. So the guy that shot at me, he's gonna have to come to me. We can see him right there. I figured out that he'd probably move away from where I was and try to come around the other side in the water. That's exactly what he was doing. He pulled out his car 98 here, got a nice hit on me. I got two hits on him so far. He's panicking, and we finish him off while he's trying to get out of the water. Getting stuck in the water, probably, the worst thing that can happen to you uh, in a game like this. You have to move so slowly. So anyway, we move, we're move. we getting closer to the end of the game. There was a lot of running to get into the zone there that I cut out. And now I'm just looking for a strategic place to uh, camp in a bush <laughs> with, my, with my bright purple pants. All right, there's a guy actually. Man, this vector has some... Uh, I'm controlling it okay, but without that vert grip, there's just a lot of kick. All right. So we got some boosts off that guy. Back to the bush. Now these purple pants are uh, a little much. They're really ruining my sneakiness. So I had to take them off. We're going to have to go in the underwear. I see a guy running out here in the blue. Give him a one tap because that is some serious blue. I think we were on phase four or phase five right there. And I knew he was taking a lot of damage. So still <laughs> waiting in this bush because there's been so much action around me. But I didn't want to just have uh, five minutes of me sitting in a bush watching my surroundings being sneaky. All right, here's a guy down here. These stupid blades of grass are in my way. Oh, but we get the kill through being super calm and super sneaky. All right, guys, so we're in the top 11. And this is where the game... And this is where it starts getting really intense, you know. You've got some kill... You've got some good kills... You probably didn't really expect to make it this far in the first place unless you were absolutely playing for the win. But now you're here. What do you do? Well, you go for the win, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to play as sneaky as possible. 
And that's what the rest of this video is. It's going to be how I'm playing in a top 10 situation. Now it's a top 9 situation. So if you look at the circle, I'm right on the edge of it. Right on the edge of it. But I want to find a spot where people can't really see me until they're right on top of me. The time for, you know, hunting down kills and looting is over. Now it's all about survival and killing off the threats or killing off the people that are the biggest threats to you at the time. So I find a nice little crevice between these two rocks and I'm fairly certain that nobody can get on top of these rocks, but I honestly don't know because I'm not the biggest fan of Sanak, so I haven't really... I've played this map a lot, but compared to some other people, I've hardly played it at all. I died at boot camp the other day in the top 10 because I didn't know how to get out of the little ditch because I just never go there, you know, so... You can tell how nervous I am here, looking back and forth, constantly checking my surroundings. Oh, look how small that circle is. The problem is, in third person, if somebody comes around that corner behind me, right, right here, they might be able to see me before I see them. So if somebody comes down the corridor from here, I'll be able to see them and hear them. But from over here, it might be a problem. So that's my biggest concern. Okay, the blue's pushing in. I'm going to have to move shortly. I'm doing my last boost. I've been struggling for boost. I was struggling for ammo at the beginning, but I found plenty of that. But that was my last energy drink. And I don't have any painkillers or adrenaline syringes. So now the blue is pushing. I'm fairly certain there's no one behind me. Because they would be <laughs> they would be getting torn apart. Alright, so we found another bush here. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to lay behind the bush so that the people in front of me that are already in the zone won't be able to see me if they're looking out here with sniper scopes or something like that. But one thing I've learned about PUBG and pretty much all Battle Royale games is always assume there's people close. There could literally be a guy in the bush right next to me that's just in a position that I can't see him. And maybe he's not moving at all, you know, so I can't hear him either. But that's really important. Always assume that there's someone right next to you. Just because you can't see and hear them does not mean they're not there, which is why you don't want to run around like an idiot in the final circle. See, my friend was watching me play this, and after the game ended, he said, uh, he said, what did he say? He said, he said, oh, you were cheating. I was like, how was I cheating? He's like, you were just waiting for them to come to you. I was like, do you play Battle Royale games? He doesn't play Battle Royale games. I'm like, okay, so you've never been in a top 10 situation where literally everyone is camping and hiding and waiting for someone to move. You definitely do not want to be the first person to just run out in the middle of the final circle and challenge people. I mean, maybe if you're going for some kind of crazy challenge, that's fine. But me, I'm going for the win, man. Plus, do you see that BRDM down there? There's a guy driving a BRDM around. Uh-oh, there's a ghillie suit right in front of me. Now we'll go with the vector. Oh yeah, easy kill. That recoil is that recoil is tough without the vert grip, but we've been managing it just fine, I think. Between this QBU and the vector, it's good. All right, so guess what, guys? Guess what I'm going to do? This BRDM is a problem, so uh, I have a problem solver, <laughs> and it's called C4. Oh my god, look at him jump out. <laughs> I threw it. Okay, it landed right on the tire. That BRDM is done. That guy just took off and somebody threw a molly. I don't know where. All right, so when the BRDM explodes, when that C4 goes off, I'm going to use the sound to uh, get in this house. Okay, there it goes. There's usually a guy in the closet, but I don't see one. Oh, yeah. Okay, that guy died quick. I can only assume that maybe he was damaged by that C4 explosion. Last guy's right here. I heard him. We get the win. Guys, that was so sweaty, but I was so glad to get a win on my first match of the day, especially because I was only playing to help my friend test something out. <laughs> I got a good win. That's just content right there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the comment section. Later.